So one of the biggest confusions when it comes to ISAs is how many can you have? Well, the good news is in the new financial year from 6th of April 2024, the rules are changing and it's going to be so much easier and get rid of most of that confusion. But I'll take you through uh, kind of what you need to know and answering some of your kind of big questions that I've had around this issue. So first of all, let's quickly talk about the old rules that will be running up until that date. And these were very kind of strict in lots of ways. You could only put new money every single financial year into one of each type of ISA. So there are four ISAs within this, the cash ISA, the stocks and shares ISA, the lifetime ISA, and the innovative finance ISA. You can only pay in one cash ISA, one stocks and shares ISA, one innovative finance ISA, one lifetime ISA. Now you could do all four of them, or you do three of them, two of them, or just one of them, but you couldn't have two cash ISAs, three stocks and shares ISAs, whatever it might be, one of each type in terms of new contributions. There's also the junior ISA, which has its own uh, separate uh, allowance, but again, only one junior ISA in each financial year. And it's important to say as well that within that, the lifetime ISA and the junior ISA, there are stocks and shares and cash versions of each, but that would still be just one lifetime ISA, cash or stocks and shares, not one cash lifetime ISA, one stocks and shares lifetime ISA, and the same for junior ISA. So they're the rules as they have been. And this is what is changing. This is the big, 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 big change when it comes to ISAs. You are going to be able to have as many as you want of the cash ISA, the stocks and shares ISA, and the innovative finance ISA. So if you want to have eight different cash ISAs, some of them easy access, and a number of different fixes or whatever it might be, that is fine. If you want three stocks and shares, two cash, one innovative finance, that is fine. You can do as many as you want in terms of those new contributions in a financial year. And why you might want to do that, well, we'll come back to that in a moment. However, what's not changing are those restrictions on the lifetime ISA and the junior ISA. They are still going to be locked down to just one of those in each year in terms of new money. Yes, if you want to change that during a year, and long as the new provider allows it, you could open up a new one, fully transfer all the money you've already contributed in that financial year to that different provider and then pay money into that different one. But you certainly can add money to two different ones in the same time if you don't do that transfer for those particular ISAs. But for the rest, there's no need to transfer money across partially or fully. You can if you want to, but you don't need to. You can literally say, all right, do you know what? I'm not going to use that one anymore. I'm going to keep it sitting there. I'm going to open this one over here if I want to. Absolutely fine. No problem at all. And this extends as well uh, in terms of a single provider. Pretty quite nice, quite convenient, wouldn't it, in some ways to have all of your ISAs with the same uh, bank or Beyond Society or platform, whatever it might be. And as long as that provider allows this, then you can do that. But this is not a requirement. So you may well find that you have got a fixed cash ISA with one bank and you think this is great, but I want to now put some in easy access later on. They don't have to let you have another account with them. So you might have to shop around, although that's no bad thing. Yes, you have got the inconvenience having two apps rather than one, but if you can get a better rate elsewhere, then that's probably going to be a benefit. The other thing to say about this is because these rules are so new, it might be that the lenders haven't necessarily got around yet to so the building societies and banks haven't necessarily got around yet to making this possible. They might still have infrastructure and systems in place that make it a bit difficult. So it might be a while yet before some of the places do let you have uh, multiple ISAs for new contributions in the same financial year. So one to keep an eye on there. There is an older type of ISA called a portfolio ISA. Nationwide, for example, have offered this uh, where you could open up a single ISA and then within that, ISA, that cash ISA, you could have some in fixes, some in easy access and things like that. It could be that some places continue to provide it in that way, uh, or even some places might start to do it, or you might see those ones phased out completely and it's just a, do you want an ISA? What type of ISA do you want? And you just apply for it and you've got it and you add the money as it goes along. Now, what's really important to remember here is that uh, there is the annual ISA allowance. So the big question that often comes along when you're talking about multiple ISAs, particularly now if you're able to have a number of different ones in the same year, is can you then add £20,000, which is the annual ISA allowance, to each of those ISAs? Could you have three cash ISAs, all of them, this is if you've got a lot of money, with 20 k in each of them? Sadly, the answer is no. That £20,000 allowance, that is not changing. That is still collective across the cash ISA, the stocks and shares ISA, the innovative finance ISA, and the lifetime ISA. That £20,000 is mixed up. It could be in one or it could be in a combo of them, but you cannot put more than that in there. Now, previously, the old rules would have made it very difficult to do that because the Bank or Beyond Society would have been monitoring this and they would have been informing uh, the Treasury, HMRC, and letting them know. And maybe you, that would have been kind of, a, you, as you went along, 
you would have known you've oversubscribed, they call it, too much money in a year. If you are going to be putting money into different ISAs from different providers, then they're not going to know. So you have much more responsibility on you now to make sure you don't go over that combined £20,000 limit. A couple of caveats I want to share with you here, though. Obviously, uh, the Lifetime ISA has its own separate £4,000 limit, as we suggested. It's just worth reminding you of that. So if you do put £4,000 in, that just leaves £16,000 collectively across those different ISAs. Uh, and the Junior ISA, again, that has its own separate £9,000 uh, allowance there as well. So we've spoken here a lot about new ISAs, new money you're adding in the financial year within that £20,000 allowance. But of course, for many of us, we've had ISAs from previous years as well. And that's often had a bit of confusion because people were thinking, well, I've already got an ISA from a previous year, then I can't open a new one because I'm only allowed to have one ISA. Well, obviously that wasn't the case in the past and it's certainly not the case now. If you have got ISAs from previous years, once the money is in there, they contain within that kind of ISA tax-free protection. So you don't need to be uh, taking money out or moving it around. You might want to transfer it across via the transfer process in order to get better rates or if it's investment to get lower fees, but it doesn't matter. You can have any number of you want in the past and now you can add to them potentially even more ISAs uh, as the years go on for that new contributions. You can add money to older ISAs if you want. You don't have to open a new ISA to add cash in. Uh, for cash ISAs themselves, that's probably not the best thing because their rates would have changed. But for investment ISAs, it may well be you've got a portfolio you're working on. You want to keep using that one and keep adding money to those old ones, let alone open, not bothering to open up a new one. Or you might want to keep some money in that old stocks and shares ISA because you like what's going on there. You don't want to have to withdraw stuff and sell it all off and transfer it, which could come with a cost. But you want to keep contributing, but you also want to open up a new one and add money to that one. Again, you can add money to both new and old ones if you wish. Well, this leads on to the question now is, should you have more than one ISA? You know, just because you can, should you? Because there is something to be said about that simplicity of just having a single cash ISA or a single stocks and shares ISA, if you wish. And there are lots of benefits to that. Um, but I certainly would be, when it comes to cash ISAs, be seeing this as an opportunity to have more flexibility within your savings. So if you are in a position to lock some but not all your money away, this does mean you can do that. You know, a year ago, I put my money, I opened up my ISA, I put it into a fix. And that would mean that if I had more money later on that I wanted to add, I couldn't add it in because a fixed account only had a small window where you could add more money. So that would obviously rule you out if I wanted to do that. In the end, I actually, it's money I had left over, I put it into an investment ISA. But now, if you want to, you can safely put money at the start of the year in a fix and later on, towards the end of the financial year, if you've got more money you want to put aside, you aren't ruled out, you can put it back into a cash ISA if you want. So that's a really good thing to be considering there as well. Um, also think about if you have had using ISAs for a long time now, remember they have been around for decades, that they're going to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger, more and more money in them. Plus the growth rather from the investments or the interest from the savings, more and more and more. When you get to that £85,000 limit, that's when the financial services compensation scheme protection caps out so if something was to go wrong the institution was to fail then you'd only be protected up to 85k so then it's worth thinking about actually having your money in more than one isa at different providers and so not at the same provider just to sort of spread out that risk so you are protected for all your money rather than having too much in there and only getting some of it back if something goes wrong so again certainly another reason to think about having more than one isa if you want to i just going back well just reiterating here if you have got older isas which have got uh, money in them, fixes that have finished, for example, or rates. Often when you open up a new ISA, a new cash ISA, the first year there's like an extra bonus. You've seen a lot of that recently. After a year, obviously that means your rate's going to drop a lot. There's no point keeping these older ISAs with low rates just because you can have lots of ISAs. I certainly would be thinking there, and actually about consolidating, obviously bearing in mind that £85,000 total in terms of protection, but consolidating them and moving them across. You could transfer more than one ISA into a new ISA if you wanted to get a better rate. So again, you've got that choice now, you've got that flexibility, you can add new money in to more than one ISA in a year if you wish to. You can transfer money into more than one ISA if you wish to. You can have many older ISAs if you want to. And that's what's so great about these rules. My name's Andy Webb, this is BeCleverWithYourCash.com. Check out these videos here for more ways to make the most of your ISA.